Our coverage continues here from the 2024 NFL Combine. PHNX Cardinals, Johnny Venerable, Bo Brock, the man himself, Jonathan Gannon, Arizona Cardinal, head coach. Now, JG, a lot of talent on display this week. I will tell you, I run a sub 4840 in high school. <laughs> Unofficial. <laughs> Where would that put me on the cards hierarchy? I think you would have a chance to be our holder. Okay. Ooh. That's a good job. Maybe you don't get hit. Maybe a scat back. <laughs> you don't get hit. Okay. You don't get hit. Yeah. You're part of game winning field goals. Yes. Right? Yes. Yep. Um, you get like carried off the field if you if you if you like hit Rudy's a game. Style? Special teams yeah. are important. Very yeah. important. <laughs> you want to be a scat back. Well, you know, I played running back in high school, but I'm 36 years old. What now, if so. the protection changes and you have to block the Mike linebacker? You know, I'm going to go to Paris Johnson Jr., ask for some assistance there, <laughs> that see that if we can work. chip together. That would work. Yeah, that yeah. would work. Yeah. That would work. Or like Will, you'd be like, hey, Will, like you're going to have to block that guy. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. That's good. Which is one team, one unit. Yeah, that's right. I that's love right. putting them on the board like right away. That was great. Is that what we're doing out here? Put, put them, yeah. You just put them on the put whiteboard? Them on a, put them on the board. Put them on the board. Put them on the board. I'm ready. I'm ready and prepared for this week. You guys are prepared this off season. We talked to Monty Austin for it. Speaking of this mm -hmm. off season, we can sense the atmosphere. A lot of these teams need quarterbacks. How comforting is it for you to walk through here? Yeah, you got a bunch of picks, a bunch of draft capital, cap space, knowing that you've got your guy in Kyler Murray. That's got to be a pretty comforting feeling. Yeah, I mean, uh, deep down, that's why I feel really good about going into the off season. Yeah. Um, because I know we, uh, we're far away, um, but I love the plan, and it's very clear how to get relevant real fast, and he's obviously a part of that. Um, you know, a lot of teams are searching for that, and a lot of teams that are searching for that don't have a path to get it, truthfully. Yeah. Uh, we have our guys, so uh, uh, I feel really good about him and, uh, our, like I said, our plan moving forward. and. Uh, and like I said, I think the other day, sky's the limit. So, yeah, I think the fan base is pumped about Kyler. He goes three and five down yeah. the stretch, four and four potentially. You know, mm -hmm. if you were, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if he yeah. just held the ball <laughs> correctly, <laughs> you know, laces out, Johnny. Uh, if <laughs> if uh, laces out, yeah, Johnny, that's right. You get, laces out, man. You feel the excitement right <laughs> yeah. around Kyler, yeah. the coaching staff. I think we learned a lot, but then mm. now we get to see Monty cook this off. Yeah, season. just tell me yes. what you're excited it's, about. It's, it's awesome. I. It, just you know watching him do his thing for a year and um just continue to develop our relationship too what's in his brain and what's in his heart you yeah. know and uh we see it very similar um but i just love how he approaches the process of being in the building what him and his staff do um you know behind closed doors then they come out the, th the work that they do with the coaches free agency draft how he sets it up his process um, it's just very straightforward, to the point, very thought out. Keep the main thing the main thing, like, you know, and, and make good decisions, you know, and it's not a perfect science and, and people, uh, you don't get it right all the time. But um, I know this, that's why I told them, I said, uh, you know, I'm a big football character person guy. Mm -hmm. You know, I want those guys in our program. Love ball guys. And love ball guys. And uh, you could join up. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> you know, our rookie class, uh, honestly, there was not one guy that didn't do the acts, you know, basically be who we want to be. Mm -hmm. And they fit right into what we're looking, how to try to build the team. So, and that's, that's hard. That, that's yeah. hard to hit on everybody. Like, you know, you know, this guy, this guy, this guy. And then you start getting in dif different spots and how that blends with the talent and the position and roster construction. It's a hard job. There's a lot going on, but man, he knocked it out of the park. So I'm, I'm excited for him to do it again. It's funny you bring up the rookie class. So we chatted with Michael Wilson yeah. a couple weeks ago and just like BS and about maybe playing with like a, a Marvin Harrison Jr. And like some guys might feel insecure about that and the team's gonna take a top receiver and I play that position. I'll tell you what, man, I was so impressed with his answer just like potentially not only pairing with a player like that or any of these wideouts, but just like, I have a lot to learn from everybody. Yeah. I could learn from a rookie. Yeah. And I, you talk about like the egoless mindset of a guy who, by the way, had two touchdowns against the Niners this year, yeah. really finished the season on a high note. Yeah, I mean, talk to me a little bit about his character. Yeah, that's what I'm kind of talking about. It's like, that's, you know, just that uh, raw, uncut, unedited answer of yeah. when you ask them that because at his core, that's who he is. Team first, then it's me. So 
I don't, you know, if it's a guy that plays my position, if a guy's that plays DB, if we we get a, loo, a new holder, like I don't care as long as he's going to assimilate in what we're doing. He's team first too, and he can help us win because that's the main thing. But like, you know, certain people say, well, I want to win, mm -hmm. but then their actions don't show you that they really want to win. Right. And that's what I'm talking about. That's part of their character and our fabric of that last rookie class. They want to win. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, you know, and I'm sure you know, he's ready to go. Like, yeah. you, okay, you know, let's line up and see if you are, you know, he's he's competitive now, yeah. you know what I mean? So, and uh, he's going to be a huge part of what we do with offensively moving forward. You guys know that. Yeah. But um, it, I didn't know that that answer came. It doesn't surprise me at all because I know the guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's, that's, uh, that's pretty cool. You know. Mike, part of it, the rookie class, as you said, the, the culture change, the culture shock, as DJ Humphreys called mm -hmm. it. Uh, I, don't, I don't read often, so anytime I read a book, I like to tell people about it. I read The Object of the Game, Coach oh, Kyle. Coach Kyle. Yeah, your high Chuck school Kyle. coach. Yeah. 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 You know, one of the reviews was, this is a guy, regardless if your team goes 2-10, and 10-2, ten, ten that you want to play for. I kind of got that feeling after mm -hmm. this season. Do, do you kind of wear that as a badge of pride that you kind of have a similar... As, you, as your coach? No, I, you know, I'm a lot, he's way more eloquent than I am um, speaking. <laughs> but <laughs> well, he, wrote um, he wrote a book. Yeah. yeah, he wrote a book, taught English for Shakespeare for uh, however many years. Um, no, I, I think that the players know, um, they, they um, decipher quickly if you care about them. Mm. And, and that's not saying everyone's going to say, yeah, I care about the players. Yeah. It's your actions. So how do you, you know, how do you handle certain things? How do you handle us? How do you talk to us? Um, things like that. So I feel like um, once they figure out that you care about them as people and then as players, they'll do what you ask. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's what we try to do walking in here. And I think, you know, it's like I said to somebody, it's a credit to some of the vets because a lot of vets, you know, some some guys don't want to get on board with that. And that's mm -hmm. okay. You know what yeah. I mean? Like you can go play somewhere else. That's yeah. fine. And be good players. But I think our vets did a really good job of, hey, this is what the coaching staff and the building, this is what we're going to hang our hat on. This is how we're going to operate. This is how we're going to meet. This is how we're going to practice. Mm -hmm. This is what is expected. This is what we're going to do. And they took it and ran with it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and once you explain, the, to me, I'm a big why guy. Like, hey, guys, like, here's, you guys, might, this might be new for you, or you might not agree with this, or, you know, what we're about to do, or whatever that is. But here's why, and this is why I believe that. And then if you do disagree, come talk to me about it and we'll hash it out now. And sometimes I change. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I do believe in explaining those guys the why behind it. They get on board with that stuff, man. You yeah. know what I mean? Because they want to win. So um, we're about winning. That's what I say. We're about winning. Uh, I'm trying to win with my son's eighth grade or oh eight-year-old flag football Are team. Are you the play caller? I am, yeah, offensively. Offensively. Now, we do a lot Throw of... Throw it every down. No, we do a lot of misdirection. <laughs> we got seven and eight-year-olds. Uh, it's tough. <laughs> it's tough to keep them motivated outside of the Capri Suns. So yes. let me, let me yes. ask you this, because yeah. I know you got young kids and then yeah. you've got a 53-man roster. Yeah. Your team played his best football at the end of the year last year. Yes. Going into Philadelphia, getting that win, that. Uh, yeah. beat four playoff teams last year. How do you keep these guys motivated over a course of a 17-game season that has its ups and downs? I mean, you played three quarterbacks yeah, last year. Yeah, um, the, you know, I think just keeping the main thing the main thing. We're we're all about, and that's that's part of our process when we were here in April, mm -hmm. uh, when we got the first team meeting. Like I, I do believe in in growth, continually trying to get better in yeah. growth, right? And if you're just results driven, when you don't win a couple games. You're, you're not worried about growth. You're worried about the result. So I think that helped, honestly, because it was a tough year. I mean, it was a tough year. You know, we lost a, a, too many games. Um, but I think that we concentrated on the process of getting better. Here's tangible things that we're getting better at. I, I know it's hard for us guys. Like we aren't doing enough to win games. That's, that's, and it's not coach speak that mm -hmm. one. Yeah. It is playing and coaching. You know what yeah. I mean? It's, it is, that's a, that's a legit answer. Um, but I think that they kept on, they kept their head down, kept working to improve every day. And, uh, they saw there was, there was a kind of a, the, where we started to do that a little bit. And there's no doubt Kyler was a part of that. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, but they, we were playing pretty good ball yeah. and our guys know, like, and, and, and we would show them and we didn't do enough to win games, 
but we were in games and it's like yeah. all right guys like this is a mistake on me this mm -hmm. is a, you know we got to do this better or that better but it's a couple plays here or there and you're it's a little bit different result yeah. you know what i mean so they knew they were there we just had to kind of get over the hump but like i said long way to go uh, a lot of work ahead of us but excited about the the journey I heard he's lost the locker room already no, no, I no haven't. Back. Listen, yeah. we beat the little Cincinnati Bengals last week. <laughs> we feel good about our feel prospects this weekend. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we have to tackle better in the first half. These guys don't want to pull flags right away. They have Make to sure they're wearing it. a mouthpiece. They have yeah. those. Yeah. Make sure they're, and they get their head out of the tackle. That's right. Make yeah. sure you're coaching that up. Absolutely. Flock to the football. You know, yeah, yeah it's yeah. it's tough, man. At the end of the For day, sure. they just want their Capri Suns and their <laughs> and their snacks. Capri after the game. Suns and mm -hmm. chocolate chip cookies. Yeah, I could do this all day. Oh yeah, I could do this all day. You know, JG, you talk about the process and you were big on that and sometimes even after your first win you're like sometimes the results take away from the process mm -hmm. right and and you love that and that was in place and you tweaked it throughout the season mm -hmm. what does the process look like for these players in the off season what are guys like kyler we talked to yeah. james james says he's facetiming kyler every day yeah and you gotta love to hear it, that but what yeah. are you hearing from those guys it's it's a it's honestly each guy's a little bit different i just got a a, a video text what i'm not a tech guy mm -hmm. <laughs> But I got a video text, Paris is taking pass sets at the facility right now. You know what I mean? So it's a little bit different, everybody. Um, you know, now it's March. They're going to start to ramp up a little bit. But uh, I think they're excited to, that's why I talk about continuity. I think they're excited to get um, together again, uh, second year in the system, mm -hmm. you know, and the things that Drew talks about and the language and the coaching points of all that, they could probably kind of take that over on their own. They're excited about some new things we're going to implement. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so I think they, you know, those guys, we got good guys. So they want it. They're working and they're they're going to get ramped up here pretty mm -hmm. good. But um, their process, well, that's why I say whatever I said, start it all over, tear it all down. That's mm -hmm. what I meant by it. We're going to start from square one. You know what I mean? And and here's what we're going to reintroduce everything. And here's so we're all clear. And then we're going to have new free agents, you know, new acquisition there. And you get a mix of draft guys mm -hmm. like you guys have to teach them too yeah you know what i mean like this is how we do things yeah. like you don't cut off your tape in the locker room and leave it there yeah like you put it in the trash like those things like little yeah. little details right how are you going to get quarters right if you can't put your tape away and where it mm -hmm. should go you know what i mean so um those guys will do a good job with that but it's an exciting it's honestly for every all 32 teams um it's an exciting time yeah. you know what i mean with the acquisition and then the work that you're doing in the off season to improve yourself. And you're, you know, the best thing about the job is the players. Yeah. So when they get back, we'll be amped up, ready to go. Uh, Bo does not think defensive tackle is oh, a wow. premium position. It is. It is. Even with a rotation like that? It like, is. Yeah. But, if you had a, uh, uh, <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> no. It, yeah, you, you would structure in a way if that guy can, can play really good in a run game, uh -huh. really good in a pass game, he might play a little more than certain guys dirty dog. but uh no, that, it's a it's a, i would say this i would i would say that's a premium position because he can affect the quarterback rack, right yeah he can affect the quarterback i mean it's great i think anyone uh they're all premium positions to me but yeah. anyone with their hand in the dirt it's a big man's game so let me ask you this Wait, if it's all equal hold on if it's all equal it's you know quarter don't don't but don't ask <laughs> hold on. no 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 hold on <laughs> don't don't ask don't answer don't ask okay. the question in a way that prefaces me to then give you the answer you want there's a right. there's an art to that okay so just like so i know you guys disagree on something yeah, yeah. Well, he's so wrong. so gi wrong. so give me so where's the where's the rift the riff is, so we do tons of mock drafts, and, uh -huh. and the Cardinals need some help on the defensive line. We've, we've talked about that yeah. at nauseum, and you guys took a pass rusher last year. Only seems organic, like, let's target one of these robust defensive tackles. Uh -huh. And I'm like, I have no issue with a first-round defensive tackle. And we've argued, like, is that worth it, fifth-year option? So what do you think? I think that as far as the edge can make an impact, corner as well, and if, if you've got guys where the talent's even, I think you take a guy that's going to probably command more and take advantage of like that fifth year option. That's my only point. Like when you look at the traditional. So you guys are position, talking money now. Well, no, no, no. Like, I, this, that's this was, a whole nother conversation. This is going to be my follow up because you Nick rotates like five guys on the defensive line. So your philosophy specifically with your defense and Nick's defense, mm -hmm. would you rather have that stalwart? Of course, everybody wants an Aaron Donald kind of player. Or would you rather have five to six guys that are rock solid? 
and you can bank on, I'm going to get somebody every year in the draft, whether it's the first round or the mm-hmm. seventh round. I mean, Dante still has mm-hmm. played really good ball yeah, for yeah. you. You have rotational guys like that. Is it a priority yeah, you, to say, I have to have a franchise DT? Okay, so I'm going to take the easy way out mm-hmm. and say you want both. No. <laughs> you want that guy that does that, and then you want five, six guys that can do that. Uh, we, it, it Honestly, like... Um, you know, a, a premier defensive tackle, he would still rotate. Like, I ain't playing that guy 65 plays. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, a premier edge guy, he's not going to play 65 plays. Like, I do like to rotate them. Um, not to say that he wouldn't play a little more than other guys, yeah. but um, you can never go wrong with, with good football players, and it's on us to make it work and figure it out. But would side with Johnny. I do right, think a D line is a premium position. You know ball. You know ball. <laughs> you, you do. You guys know ball. It's okay to be wrong. Sometimes. You know, like jet sweep to the right. We do a lot of dives too. Dives. 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 Yeah. Thirty-two dives. That's right. 32. Forty-five belly. Forty-five. Yeah. Okay. Min- minimal stuff where the mistakes can happen. Limit mm-hmm. the mistakes. Big pocket. Mm-hmm. That's what we coach too. Yeah. That's cool. That's coach, cool. Because Jonathan Gann has been so generous through the time. I guess I, I gotta I ask you a fun thing. one, right? Like, okay, give me a fun one. You. Kyler, you mentioned Paris Johnson's at the facility. All you guys are around in Tempe, right? Yeah. Is Monty ever having to like close his door because somebody's coming to give him their latest input uh, on the draft? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you you got to do one of these with Drew because he oh, has yeah. a great story about that. And I'm not going to spill the beans. Okay. He's got a great okay. story about our quarterback and that. Because I, I, no, I'm not going to okay. go on. It's, a, right. it's just you got to catch Drew. Gotcha. Um, yeah, they they want to know what we're doing. Right. They want to know what we're doing. Like, hey, and they also have opinions on, hey, this is, <laughs> hey, what do you think about this guy? I don't know. I didn't like that guy. What, why don't you like? Like, you know what I mean? He went like, he had, you know, however many catches for 2,000 yards and 20 some touchdowns. You don't like yeah. the guy? Like, what's going on, bro? <laughs> you know. So, uh, no, it's. Um, I I love the conversation, the back and forth. They care, man. But uh, some guys are a little more aggressive than others. But with that, but uh, you know, the, I'll say about the quarterback, he's a. He's a ball junkie, so like yeah. he's, he's watching corners right now. I'm like, what are you watching corners for? <laughs> like, I got it, I got it. You know what I mean? So there has been a ton of draft prospects that he has publicly or privately said <laughs> that he liked, and yeah. they've all hit. By yeah. the way, Ceedee Lamb and Creed Humphreys, Tristan Wirfs, like yeah. he's, yeah, he's he pretty solid. Worfs. He liked he Paris liked last Worfs. year too. Yes, he did. Yes, so he did. pretty good track yeah, record. No, it's cool. Free agency, though, right around the corner. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned it. Like, how do you go about that? Because it's a courting process, right? Mm-hmm. And everybody comes out and says, well, it's all about the money. But it's not sometimes. It's usually about relationships. I mean, you yeah. brought Kazir White here. Yeah. He entrusted you with his development mm-hmm. in Philadelphia. Like, for you, how, how intimate of a recruiting process yeah. can that be? Um, you know, <laughs> It, I think it helps. Yeah. I think it helps. It's not the the tipping point. Um, I think the tipping point um, is first and foremost money. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say that, and as it should be for those guys, because yeah. you might be only able to get a chance to do it once in your career. Um, but I also think another tipping point is opportunity and what they hear. They talk players talk to players, man. Mm-hmm. So they'll ask certain players, "Hey, what's it like?" You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know. And um, so hopefully that's that's uh, in our favor. Um, but uh, it's going to come down to, you know, you never know. you got a plan going into free agency. Mm-hmm. Hey, here's kind of a couple guys here, a couple guys here, a couple guys here. It, you truly don't know what the market is yeah. until the market sets itself. Guys so are getting tagged. Yeah, that's like, so, yeah, right. oh, I know. There was a guy that came off the board. I was like, man, I did a lot of work on him. Yep. Resigned. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yep. you know, and then I know the number went up. So that's probably mm-hmm. going to impact how things go. But um, we'll, just like we did last year, you know, with, with, you know, the two guys that come off the top of my mind that weren't here because we re-signed some of our own, but Froholt and Kaiser, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And those were two guys that, you know, I know Kaiser got nicked, but Froholt started every game. Yeah. Kaiser would have started every game. So looking to add good people first um, and good players second. So um, that's that's what we're going to do yeah. this year. Both those guys beloved in the locker room. Oh, my God. You helped too, my guy too. Johnny redeem himself here today by siding with redeem him. He left him. about 80% of his stake on his plate. Not true. After he, Not ch- true. he chopped it up like he was – 
Eighty percent. Nah, that's, 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 that's not true. That's not true. I have been doing some diet. intermediate fasting, and that's impacted <laughs> intermittent my fasting. to to to, to consume okay. a bunch of steak. Here's what I will say. Yeah. Is, are you gonna have more mental clarity? I do absolutely, <laughs> especially right now as I look at you. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna tell you right now that steak had a fourth round grade and it was overdrafted. I took oh it God! The don't round. don't kill the steakhouse. Here. No, it was, was it? it was excellent. Fourth round grade. It was excellent. Uh, that doesn't sound. It excellent. was a fourteen ouncer. And, and I finished at least two thirds, right at there. least two thirds of that. And then these guys are, are blowing me grief. They're like, oh, you gotta finish the steak? I'm like, I'm sorry, are you paying for my steak? I'm, I pay for my steak, I can decide how much sure I wanna can. consume. That's true. You did sure you can. take it to go? No, I did not. I mean, I, we're in our Airbnb, I don't know if you know, you could, yeah, you keeping could that. Want breakfast. Yeah, maybe. I have an issue with eating late, you know, we talked about this off air, and then like trying to be active the next day. Yeah, this, it's hard. We're so out of our routine. It's hard. Yeah, we're, I, this is, this is uh, somebody would ask me, hey, what do because I like to work out at a place called NIFS, National Institute of Fitness and Sport, and uh, somebody was asking me, hey, when you, what's your setup, this and that, I'm like, guys, like, you don't come to the combine to like, get like make gains right like, you're just like trying to like get moving a little bit you know what i mean yeah. but uh gonna hit yeah. nips and go for yeah, my go uh, my personal best yeah uh, at, yeah there's a good i don't, i can't run but i know a lot of people like to run down the the river the canal right yeah. there yeah. that's it's beautiful i lived yeah. here for three years yeah so um it's a good city i think if in your prime coming through and on the safety blitz, you probably blow up a scat back like this. I'd rather. Why actually, even go there? I, he's a, he's I, a Division I, One athlete. He went to Louisville. Yeah. I have a he journalism would, would, degree. Come on. I, I, but I probably couldn't cover him, so he got oh, me there. Thank he got God. me there. This, 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 this has been the best interview of yeah. all time. Jonathan Gannon, yeah. so generous with I his time here. The NFL awesome. Combine. We had a blast, and uh, hopefully, good vibes going into this offseason. Yeah, no you guys crush it, man. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate the time, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. You got it.